You know, fear of the unknown and what do we do next on the tip of everybody's tongue when it comes to your health and when it comes to finances. So joining me now, Curtis and Damien from SBC to help us figure out the financial part of this. Um, gold typically performs well in uncertain times is what everybody's been told. Can you kind of tell us why that is? Absolutely. So in economic uncertainty, gold is always going to perform well. Underpinnings of inflation um, are going to move the market. But what really, I think, if you dive a little bit deeper, is the debt to GDP ratio that really moves gold. It's, it's what um, you know, a metric economists use to track how much a country owes, a country owes to how much they produce. So what you're seeing in uh, correlative downswings, 2000, 2008, we saw the percentage of GDP to debt upwards of 60, 70, 80 percent. At those times, we saw gold move from $700 an ounce to $1,900 an ounce. Fast forward today, our GDP to debt ratio is at 108 percent. And most economists are predicting anywhere from 150 to 200 percent of GDP to debt. So what does that mean when you hear these crazy predictions of gold going to 2000 2500 even $10,000 an ounce? Those aren't crazy anymore. So if you thought that you missed the, the boat and, and you're late, uh, you're, you're in fact early. The numbers suggest that this has a lot more room to grow just based on the $2.3 trillion we pumped in the market today, the $2.4 trillion we did last week, and it's not going to stop for a while. So that leads me to the question for you. How do you think this stimulus is going to affect things? Well, I mean, they're injecting quite a lot of capital into the system. Uh, I think it's over or like an eight trillion dollars in the first couple of weeks. Um, I'm not sure if the stimulus is going to be as effective as it was in 2008. Um, there was a lot more damage, a lot more unemployment, and I think a lot more businesses are going to close. So the stimulus is artificially trying to prop up assets like the Fed has always right. been doing. But this time, I mean, we're already seeing inflation um, in a lot of things. And now with the shutdown, it's going to create more. Um, so I would anticipate inflation to um, really kick in, which is only going to help gold, gold, silver, um, amazingly. So the average investor, the average person, 401k, whatever their investments are, the old adage is you buy low, you sell high. It sounds very simple. So if everything is so cheap now in the stock market, we've seen this huge fall. Doesn't that tell a person that it's time to start reinvesting in the stock market while it's cheap? You, you can definitely uh, go down that route. What, what, what I like to do and for my clients is have a balanced portfolio. So it, it generally doesn't have to be a zero-sum game where gold has to lose in order the stock market to win or vice versa. What we saw just in the last four years in a booming economy, um, stock market all times high, gold went up 38% to S&P of 13%, and I think the Russell is down 8%. So um, if, if you're really smart and balanced in your portfolio, you should have at least 75 to 10% in gold. I think what people make the mistake so often is that they put all their eggs in one basket, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the old adage. Now, if you can anticipate every 10 years, you're going to find ourselves in economic catastrophe. 2020, 2008. 9-11 uh, and the tech bubble, you go back to the 87 Wall Street crash, students of history can go back and back and back. But I think the smarter investors are going to understand that uh, you can have both and still win. So yeah, if you see the stock market, you know, some good buys in there, absolutely. Just make sure that you have gold in, in some of that basket. Everyone's saying that we're hoping for this V. Big drop in the economy, hit the bottom and straight back up so it looks like a V. What do you say to that? I say it's probably going to be all next to impossible. Um, the last time you can make a comparison, anything close to this was 2008. Um, we've already exceeded in just the last two weeks the job losses that we had in 2008, but that took 18 months. Mm -hmm. We've also already, um, in two weeks, created as much stimulus as we did in those times. Um, the Fed is very scared. I think you're going to see more. Um, I would say probably an L-shaped recovery where it just tracks along possibly for a couple of years before anything really gets going. Um, that could create stagflation, no growth in the economy, and high inflation. Um, so I think things are going to be a lot different. We have much higher unemployment. And the uncertainty right now is it's hard to answer that, right, because when is this going to be over? Is it over now? I don't think so. Is it going to go till the end of April, May? Some are saying 
September. Cuomo is saying nine months. That takes us to like January. So that's a hard question to answer, but I think it is going to be um, different this time, which is, you know, four words that normally you shouldn't say. A lot of people um, looking for uh, information as quickly as they can get it. Uh, website's a pretty valuable resource, right? Absolutely. We have, yeah. we have a great website. We do um, updated blogs constantly. We just did a, um, a bunch of all our uh, reports are all updated for 2020. And now we're, you know, trying to update stuff that's very relevant for what's going on and how this is impacting um, the economy and, and people's money. Listen, information is king, and bringing experts in in the different places for you can get that information is what we want to do on the show. So I really thank you guys for coming down. Your expertise is much appreciated.